Hi everyone, and welcome to this past virtual summit 2020 session on designing data vault and loading it with uh, Azure Data Factory. I'm very thankful uh, for this opportunity to share my experience and knowledge of working with Azure Data Factory and creating use cases to model and populate data vaults. My name is Ray Simaev. I'm an IT consultant and data professional who likes data to be structured and well understood. This session will be filled with demos and practical scenarios that help me and hope to look at other data modeling techniques as well and how to um, uh, see it and analyze different data, data loading patterns. So before I uh, start with my session, uh, let me remind you about all different um, options that are available within the past uh, organizations that um, you can attend. Um, uh, you can become um, a member of the local user group or you can attend uh, 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 free SQL Saturday, uh, events uh, that are very great um, and uh, um, filled with very interesting sessions as well. And also you can be part of the, the past um, uh, as, uh, as a volunteer or even speaker. Uh, to share your knowledge about data platform um, solutions uh, provided by Microsoft. Uh, also, I'd like to remind you about the uh, need to um, to provide a, uh, yeah, a session evaluation. I also provide feedback about all other sessions that you will have a chance to attend during this uh, uh, past summit. It's very helpful for uh, for the speakers to learn about their um, uh, areas of development that they need to work uh, in terms of um, preparing those presentations and also it will also will help to get some ideas uh, about the um, interesting topics that um, you as audience would like to uh, hear uh, from the speakers that may have a chance to present during this uh, this piece this uh, past summit or other similar events so i want to start a session with a quote data are just summaries of a thousand stories tell a few of those stories to help make the data meaningful as much as I like working with computer technologists, I like working with real use case solutions where some of the technologies could be used. I'm in favor of fighting a problem and then dedicate my efforts to solve the, uh, such problems. Uh, so therefore, this session will be focused on creating a use case of populating a data world model <clears throat> with the help of a data factory framework provided by Microsoft. And it will be less about studying a set of technological features available in um, Azure Data Factory, or in a way possi possibly define some limitations that we may face with uh, data vault modeling design on its own. So I would um, try to briefly summarize that the, the, the key takeaway from, the t uh, from this session will be that ADF is just a technology and data vault is a methodology. And this talk will be about uh, using um, the first one to help to populate and support the, the second one. Uh, so let's briefly review the today's session plan. First, we will take a look at uh, data vault modeling basics. We'll talk about the, um, the hops, links, and satellite tables, and how uh, this uh, data um, um, modeling approach is different from other data warehouse or architecture design methodologies. Uh, then we will review um, examples of converting a simple model um, simple uh, data model into a data vault model. And then a brief overview of our Azure Data Factory mapping data flow capabilities will be provided as well. Um, then we also will create our biggest demo of creating a data flow scenario um, where we will try to populate uh, a data vault pattern. And if time permits, uh, we will work on our second demo to show incremental data loads uh, in data vault. And uh, we'll close the session with the uh, uh, summaries and, and conclusions. Um, when we talk about, um, or when we try to decide what methodology can we choose when create data warehouse, the dimensional approach made popular by Ralph Kimball uh, states that the data warehouse uh, should be modeled using a dimensional model or star schema or snowflake. And the normalized approach, also called like a, a third normal form of 3NF, uh, made popular by Bill Inman, um, uh, defines that the data warehouse should be modeled using the entity relational or normalized model. Then the data world could be declared as a 
basically as a byproduct of both of these methodologies, utilizing transactional refer referential integrity and use of almost like a dimension and fact tables, although they're named differently um, within the data world uh, ecosystem. Ralph Kimball recommends building the data warehouse that follows the bottom up approach. In Kimball's philosophy, it first starts with mission critical data marts that serve the analytical needs of, of departments. Then it integrates these, these data marts for data consistency through a so-called informational uh, bus to address various needs of departments um, in different areas uh, within an enterprise. Um, in a dimensional approach, data is partitioned into either uh, facts, which are generally numeric transactional data, or dimensions, which are the reference information that gives context to the facts. A key advantage of a dimensional approach is that the data warehouse is easier for, for the user to understand and to use. Also, the retrieval of the data from the data warehouse in this um, uh, uh, framework uh, tends to operate uh, a bit more quickly. The main disadvantage, however, of the dimensional approach is data integrity of facts and dimensions, and um, uh, loading the data warehouse with um, uh, with data from different different operational uh, systems becomes to become more, more complicated. Where one one of the, one of the main constraints that we may fa face sometimes um, creating uh, an ETL process to populate a um, um, dimensional. Uh, data warehouses. We first need to populate dimension table first, uh, which will then uh, help us to define the surrogate keys. Uh, and uh, once we move um, past this uh, milestone of of, uh, of the initial population of the dimension, then we can move um, ourselves further down to populate our facts. Um, so the, I would say that the key takeaway from the uh, key will approach to create uh, a data warehouse that is based on facts and dimensions. And it doesn't allow for uh, loops uh, for relationships. Bill Inman recommends building the data warehouse using the top down approach. In Inman's philosophy, it starts with building a big centralized enterprise data warehouse where all available data from transaction system are consolidated into subject oriented um, uh, data. Then those data marts uh, are built for the analytical needs of each in, um, individual departments. So basically I would say the, the Inman model aims for a more comprehensive approach instead of like a small or a single purpose uh, model that could be covered just uh, uh, by one uh, or, or a few other departments. Uh, tables are grouped by subject areas that reflect general data categories, like in this case, um, uh, data on customers, products and finance. And then the normalized structure, <clears throat> excuse me, um, <clears throat> this normalized structure divides data into entities, which creates several tables in a relational database. The main advantage of this approach is that it's um, it is straightforward to add information into a database. A disadvantage, however, of this approach um, is because of the number of different tables involved. It, sometimes it can be difficult for users both to join the data from different sources and then um, uh, have access to the information without a precise um, knowledge and understanding how those um, uh, um, the source and data um, uh, is defined and how um, the data structure um, is defined within a data warehouse as well. Uh, so in this case, uh, we may uh, try to see an alternative way to create a data model for our data warehouse, so-called like a data vault. A data vault is a hybrid data modeling technology. Oh, I would say, maybe I would just correct myself. It's not a technology, it's more a methodology that provides um, a way to analyze historical data um, and how this data is represented from multiple sources. Um, um, and then this data representation supports um, the um, analysis of um, various data changes within uh, um, our data uh, data set. Then Linset, um, which uh, um, 
uh, who is a creator of the of this um, data vault uh, methodology describe um, data vault as a hybrid approach that combines um, a third normal form and a store schema where this design is flexible it's scalable it's consistent and it's adaptable uh, to the needs of the, of the enterprise so um, maybe on a very high level, DataVault is a progression of different modeling strategies with different trade-offs, and um, DataVault allows for fast loading of the raw sourcing data. And I'll we'll, I'll try to um, um, shed more light on um, the why the DataVault uh, um, works uh, really well uh, with a large full uh, with very big uh, data sets, and then. It supports fast loading um, of the uh, incoming uh, raw sourcing data. So, in this case, on on this first slide, you can see that there's a three um, uh, uh, different um, uh, data vault uh, table types. The hubs uh, basically uh, it's um, they're designed to host the unique business key. Um, um, they also um, um, along with the um, Storing the business key, um, they come from the source and, uh, from the source side. They also um, uh, contain the so-called like a hash a hash value or hash value of that of that business key that come from the source side. Uh, the links uh, or the associations, it's um, uh, it's uh, basically um, where we uh, can define how those business key ca uh, can be linked with each other. Um, and the satellite, the satellite is basically. Um, there are the placeholders or the containers for the all the descriptive attributes for the information in the hubs, um, and uh, and that's why they're like this the stored in, in a structure called satellite tables. Um, uh, on a very high level, the, the key takeaways from um, looking at the hubs and links and satellite tables: the hubs maps business key to the surrogate key. Uh, links allows us for uh, to have the joins between entities. And satellites contain the the actual uh, descriptive source and data. In this example, um, and if you remember from, from all other previous slides, uh, I was using the uh, uh, data set uh, which was available in the AdventureWorks um, data house uh, sample from Microsoft, and I'm using the subset of of of, of that of that database uh, in order to portray the transition from the in this case, a Kimball dimensional uh, data modeling techniques and how um, those um, uh, dimensional um, the dimension the fact tables can be transitioned into into the data world methodology. Uh, and in this in this very example, a dimension product table is represented with two tables. Uh, we have a hub product and satellite product. A hub table is a container that holds uh, a business key along with the two more additional service columns. So I'll say like service columns. The first one is a hash value uh, based on the very same. Uh, in this case, look, it's a um, the business key or the product alternative uh, alternate key. Um, and also, we also have a timestamp um, to track the time when the record was inserted in, in, into this very, very table. And the satellite table contains every other columns except for the business. If we didn't have the, if we didn't have the hash, then we would, um, um, we would see that the load required to have a lookup on the hub and links um, uh, tables. Um, and but instead, the hashing table uh, provides us with a way to um, have a uh, a unique value based on. Uh, um, uh, whatever the columns in this case, we we're for our hash functions. We will we'll, we will be supplying only one value, and this will, uh, one unique value will will be uh, will become a representation uh, of this uh, one single entry uh, on the level of uh, of um, um, hub product table. And if we look at the satellite tables, uh, we may have um, uh, more than one uh, related instances to the very same hub product hash key. Um, that would that would support any further uh, uh, data uh, um, uh, data alteration or, or data changes uh, to uh, from the sourcing side in case if uh, um, if the size of the product or the model name or any anything that's uh, that uh, may represent um, um, a data change to uh, 
data attributes related to the primary uh, to, like, to to the primary sourcing key in this case, it was a product alternative key. Then those uh, alternative versions will be populated within the satellite ta uh, satellite table. Um, then this um, the next slide. Uh, uh, I'm where I'm trying to show how uh, to connect tables with tax. Um, uh, here's basically you can see that the, the fact internet sales table is um, is represented in a, um, as an additional satellite table, and with the help of the link table, we can join facts with the dimensions in our data vault example. And the link table in this case helps us to define relationship between our hubs as well as a uh, fact-driven satellite tables. And also, I would like to emphasize the need to have hash key values for satellite tables. The approach is that this um, is that this um, is the same with as with the business keys. Only that here, all the <clears throat> descriptive data is hashed. Like we, um, along with uh, um, replicating the value of the, uh, like uh, looking at the example of the um, hot product hash key, within the satellite product table, uh, we see the satellite product um, HD like, or the hash different uh, column. Uh, which will combine um, the hash value of all the descriptive values within the satellite table itself. And then the, um, uh, this will reduce the efforts during the upload process because just one column um, has to be looked up instead of just measuring um, in case of uh, uh, as, um, multiple columns uh, will be changed. We'll, we won't need to have to, to check uh, and compare uh, the... Um, the new version of that value uh, of, of that of day column or with um, the the current value, which would um, um, based uh, within the, the, the database, and then this the satellite upload process first will check if the hash key uh, value is already in, uh, exists in the satellite, and uh, secondly, if there's uh, any difference between the hash uh, values. If the value is different, that means that we will need to create a new version of. Uh, of this um, hub product uh, hash key related uh, record within the satellite table. Uh, and this will be like an example of uh, looking at the um, uh, previously shown uh, uh, four tables um, uh, from the Kimball approach to, to specify uh, customer, geography, product, and fact and sales tables that we have a rep representation so that those four tables um, have been transformed into nine tables within a data vault methodology. But um, I would try to comfort and say, like, don't be scared with the number of tables involved. Uh, data vault requires, um, does require more tables, but it offers more fl uh, flexibility when we um, um, design our uh, data loads um, uh, processing as well as uh, with um, within our way to query the data uh, for our analytical pur purposes afterwards. All right, so we briefly uh, covered the uh, some of the uh, some of the details uh, related to data vault. Uh, let's try to cover some um, uh, additional details um, for the data factory, which will become our uh, development tool uh, that we'll be using today uh, during our demo to create uh, a, a data vault ETL process to populate one of the subset of, of tables. So my very first experience with Azure Data Factory was, um, at that time it was version one, was in uh, 2017. There was a wizard-based framework to copy data from a source to a destination. Output was in the form of a JSON file, uh, and we even thought to use uh, Visual Studio to update and maintain this code. With, um, with the current V2 version of the Azure Data Factory, a visual user interface became a standard way to alter control flows of digital transformation activity tasks. And also it provided us with, a, um, I would say like advanced monitoring options, uh, which um, help us to analyze statistics of failed or successful ADLF pipelines runs. And um, in my case, coming from the experience of using this SSS solution to extract, to, to extract transforming load data, with the help of using control on, on data flow tasks, then uh, my data factory development practice becomes no different from having the same concept of control flows and data flows. It's just that this data transformation workspace exists in, uh, uh, exists in, in, uh, in Azure Cloud environment. 
And um, I would say the ADF itself, I would say, uh, has five main components. It has activities, it has pipelines, data sets, link services, and triggers. Activity um, at a very high level represents a processing step in the pipeline. For example, you might use a copy activity to copy data from one data store to another data store. Anything available for you in the control flow panel could be called as, uh, as an activity or a task. A pipeline, um, on the other hand, is a logical grouping of activities that perform a unit of work. Together, those activities in the pipeline perf may perform a task. For example, a pipeline can contain a, a group of activities that in ingests data from an Azure blob, uh, then mapping data flow, can do further data processing, and then you can execute some Databricks notebook um, if it's needed for, for your analytics. Uh, data sets represent a data structure that simply point or, or reference the data you want to use in your activities or inputs uh, or outputs. And link services are mm, not more than uh, like definition or data connectors to your data sources uh, that you can use in your um, uh, sourcing and um, uh, destination or in a data uh, uh, factory terminology like sync. Um, um, data interfa uh, interface points. The other way to, one of the way to, um, there are several ways that you can uh, initiate a process or execution process of uh, your um, Azure Data Factory pipelines. Uh, and um, the, they're either file event based triggers or uh, time related triggers where you can actually schedule a pipeline. Um, and then based on that, based on your defined schedule and the execution of, uh, of uh, uh, your data factory workflow, uh, we prefer. Now let's try to uh, uh, to cover um, and maybe uh, uh, talk a little bit about, about um, mapping data flows. Um, mapping data flows on the, um, uh, it's very similar to, to, to data flow um, uh, that you may um, have experience with um, using the uh, SSIS because they have sources, um, they have um, sinks or destinations like we used to have in, um, in SSIS, and they also have um, uh, transformation steps or simply transformations. Um, as Uh, a source uh, basically um, configures your data source for data flow. When you design a data flow, your first step will always be to configure a source transformation, because um, without a source, you won't be able to like to um, you won't have a way to transform data because that's, that that will be your very first um, uh, starting step. And every data flow requires at least one source transformation, but you can add as many sources as, as necessary to complete your data transformation. You can also join those sources together with a join lookup or other unit transformation, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to talk about that as well. Then, uh, like, like I already mentioned, sync. Uh, after you transform a data flow, you can um, uh, direct or, uh, or um, target your destination environment or your syncs. Um, um, with your uh, transformed um, uh, destination data set. You can have as many sync transformation um, as your data flow requires as well. In a data flow, you can uh, di um, direct your data factory to create a, either a new table uh, based on the uh, data set that could be defined within your uh, data flow workflow. Um, or you can uh, or you can, uh, be more specific and, and define the um, the existing uh, data connector um, as your sinking point of, of, of a uh, data flow process. And you have transformation data stuff. So basically, all that you play between your sources and sinks to additionally change your data flow stream before it gets sunk are called, are, are called transformation steps. And there are many different steps. You can uh, you can uh, you can join multiple uh, multiple data streams. You have you can you can have um, you can create additional splits. You can unions uh, data sets. You can have uh, lookups. Uh, you can uh, create uh, derived columns and many 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 more. 
Um, uh, once you start working with data flows, you can, you can see all the uh, existing and, and available um, uh, data flow transformation steps. Um, I would say the, the key takeaway of the of the mapping data flows is that um, a, um, ADF uh, data flows are uh, and the ADF itself is very similar to the SSS, uh, and it consists of um, a data movement, um, uh, uh, like tool set uh, with the help of uh, data flows within the data factory UI. And it also um, the data factor provides us with the control the control logic or the, the control flows, anything that uh, the environment will recreate our pipelines. All right, so let's um, move uh, to our first um, uh, demo to create uh, um, our very first uh, uh, data flow that will will that will be using to populate one of the tables of our uh, data world model. Um, as you remember, um, and I already have an Azure instance uh, in my uh, personal uh, uh, Azure subscriptions. Uh, these, these are those. Um, these are um, the nine tables that um, um, I had transformed from uh, um, from the Kimball. Uh, uh, data warehouse methodology, and uh, they uh, 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 they represent the, the structure of all those nested columns that we will need to have in order to uh, support uh, the uh, ETL process to provide those tables. In this case, I will be looking into uh, um, a process of creating data world, uh, um, uh, which will uh, cover the use case to populate the ge geography related, related tables. In um, in my Azure, uh, let me just um, in my Azure environment, I have a resource group which uh, which um, have um, has several resources, and um, one of, one of these resources is a, a storage account, uh, which does have one um, one container. Within this container, I have uh, uh, four storage files, uh, and for this particular demo, I'll be using one. Uh, fly, uh, one source file, uh, and if we take a look at how that file looks like, we're going to see that, which was extracted from the from the AdventureWorks uh, data sample database. It has the the prime the the primary business key, uh, which in, in this case it's uh, um, the geography alert key, uh, which um, uh, hosts uh, IP addresses. Um, uh, and um, which I didn't uniquely identify each individual uh, customer. Um, and then uh, we also have all other uh, uh, additional descriptive attributes. Um, uh, so let's uh, move. And also within the, the, this first same um, uh, research group, I have a data, data factory. So once we open data factory, um, I have an option to create a, a, a new data flow. So let's do that. I click plus um, uh, on my uh, data factory uh, uh, development environment, and I, sp I specify that I'll be choosing uh, a data flow. I'm clicking OK. So the very first uh, the very first step will be just to uh, in um, since as we remember that uh, that uh, each data uh, data flow uh, within a data factory requires to have at least one um, uh, source and transformation. So in this case, uh, let's first give a more friendly name to our um, uh, data flow. In case we specify it's a pass ADF um, data uh, vault. We'll hide this attribute, and we'll we'll click um, the source and transformation, and uh, we'll try. It, we'll be connecting to our remember, remembering that we have uh, our source and file uh, in a blob storage account. So in that case, we'll give a, uh, a um, user friendly name to our source. We'll specify that this will be uh, source uh, uh, geography. We'll specify, and I already uh, have defined all uh, all the nested uh, data sets for uh, for this demo. Uh, and in this case, I'm interested in connecting to this uh, um, blob storage account, which uh, in this case is connected to a flat file. In this case, is th this is the very same file from the um, 
hop from the, from my storage accounts, and I can uh, um, see that it's the very same data that uh, um, I have recently uh, shown to you as well, which I'm going to be, uh, which I'm going to use as a source in uh, in my attempt to create a, a data vault. The next step would be that uh, remembering the uh, data structure uh, for both of my um, hub geography table and the uh, satellite geography table. Uh, I will need to um, create um, additional so-called like service columns. I'll need to create my hub geography hash key based on the uh, business key that will come, that uh, comes from the source uh, source inside, and also we have to create an another uh, satellite hash key along with the load times. So let, let's do that. So for um, in order for me to add additional columns to my data sets, I'll need to do this. Let's specify a direct column. Um, I'll just give it more meaningful name, hash columns. Um, and um, just make sure that, that um, I name them correctly. I'll specify geography hash key value. And I can um, either click in the expression build here and uh, specify the my hash function. The, and I'll specify the, that the expression will come from uh, from the business key. Let me just correct again. Uh, the geography. I will click save and finish. And either I can uh, and for me to continue the process of adding the, uh, two additional two other additional columns, I can either do this from uh, this UI by clicking the the add column in this uh, in this area, or I can. Um, go back to the, the overall expression builder of my uh, derived column transformation task and continue adding columns in uh, in, um, in, uh, in this interface, which uh, we'll continue doing as well. So in this case, I will name this column as um, ge geography hash difference. Uh, you can come up with um, other alternative way to name those columns basically, but this will this column will host a hash value of all other descriptive um, elements um, of my uh, source and uh, data file. I'll be using the another hash value fu uh, function with uh, uh, where I would specify all my columns, including my business case while well, I'll do this. And I'll specify CD, province, state province name, country name, English, and postal code. I have them all, city, state, province. Um, I click save and uh, I click, or I can continue adding the additional uh, load timestamp column as well. So in this case, I'll name it this way, load TS. Uh, and I'll just um, uh, assign the uh, result of the current timestamp function. All right, I have um, now from the initial seven um, seven column uh, based data sets, um, which I can do a pre data preview um, uh, in my uh, data flow uh, development environment. Just give it a few more seconds to show the the result. All right, in this case, I'm 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 uh, looking at the very same data set which I was able to see initially uh, in my storage account, and I was able to see in the data preview of my source and data set of my of my data flow. And now I can see it within data preview. In the same way, I can uh, see uh, the slightly transformed data set. In this case, uh, the ver the very same the very same seven columns of data. Plus, I will I will expect to see three additional columns um, added. And I hope it will run a bit faster. But if it doesn't run, I, I may still continue uh, uh, developing my uh, data flow. I'll just give a few more seconds. All right, I can see my data set, and I can then also I do see the uh, three additional columns. In this case, which the, defines the hub geography um, hash key, the satellite geography uh, difference, and the load timestamp. 
Now, uh, I have basically all the information that uh, could help me to define whether um, the data from the source and files is new uh, uh, or and whether this data could uh, be considered as a um, um, as new data that need to be um, uploaded um, into my uh, target uh, table, which in this case it's uh, the hub geography. Just uh, to show that this those tables should be empty. Uh, I've deleted it from them initially. Yeah, those ta those tables empty. Um, then in this case, I need to I need to uh, have um, a source and data connector source and data connector to my um, uh, data um, within my um, Azure uh, within my um, uh, target or destination environment. In this case, uh, uh, it's the Azure SQL Azure SQL uh, database uh, uh, with all those tables. So I'll be using the the more friendly name, and um, I should have a data set which will link me to uh, to my uh, geography uh, hub table. Um, in this case, uh, like I said, the, the the hub geography table does have three columns, and um, I can uh, start using the the um, and a third transformational task, which would help into to to check the uh, and compare the data set between those two uh, between between those two data sets. The name of this the, uh, data transformation task is uh, called exists. I can specify. Check new geography. From the last stream, it will be my data set that will be coming from a, from a hash columns uh, uh, data stream, and on the right stream, I can I can choose that the uh, my exist time conditional uh, data set will be uh, a source hub geography which I have just created, and in this case, I would like to check that the uh, the conditional logic sh uh, should show me like the the ex uh, the the records that do not exist, um, and my conditional um, uh, or the join the or the the join logic between those uh, between these two data sets will be based on the uh, the hub geography uh, hash key value. Uh, let's save this the uh, briefly those four um, uh, data transformation steps and maybe just uh, talk a little bit about what we have done so far. So we've created a, a source and way to uh, query the data from the um, uh, storage data file with all the hash key uh, values. Then we also um, were able to join the the actual table that we we are tr we are in the process of populating, and this uh, particular um, the logic will identify if um, anything that within um, uh, the sourcing data uh, will will be new to the to the um, to the table that we're trying to pop to uh, sync our our data in. In this case, knowing that the the, the ten columns will be coming uh, from this um, check new geography um, uh, data transformation step, but knowing that our set geography table only has um, nine columns, it doesn't have the the product alternative key. So in this case, we'll we can basically. Um, Remove some of the columns that we don't. Uh, oh, the actual, actual um, in our hub geography table, we only have three columns, which we uh, we will be populating. In this case, um, I'll use I'll be using the select um, um, the select transformation task, and I'll I'll give a more friendly name. I'll specify geography. I'll select all column, and I'll only keep the. The business key from the sourcing site. I'll keep the hash key of based on the very same column, and I'll use the uh, load um, timestamp. And the rest will be will be deleted. Now I'm ready to. Um, I'm I'm having those three columns. I can do the data preview if it runs a bit faster. If it doesn't, that's okay. We'll be testing the the complete uh, uh, data flow later. Uh, maybe I'll give you a few more seconds. Uh, and then finally, um, I'm yeah, um, I'm seeing the the data from all those three three columns, and I'm I'm fully ready to uh, to sync this data um, into my uh, the very same hop geography table. I'll say sync up uh, geography, um, and uh, I will specify. 
the various in your table in here. On the mapping tab, I, uh, mapping tab, I can I can see whether I've uh, create I've I have the exact mapping, or I can rely on the auto mapping uh, feature as well. Um, and the very same uh, data from from this uh, from this preview um, that we we are able to see within the select hub geography table uh, will be populated into the uh, final uh, um, hub geography table. We could be happy, and then we can rerun uh, this data flow um, from uh, uh, the uh, regular pipeline within the data factory in order to populate the table. But um, and then we can create a similar in a similar way. Um, a data flow uh, to populate this uh, satellite table, um, uh, satellite geography table. But um, we have a flexibility to reuse the very same uh, like part of the uh, of the data stream within the very same data flow that, uh, and we can populate uh, the data uh, into another um, um, satellite table in this case. So um, in this case, we'll, the both um, the both hub table and satellite geography tables will be uh, populated from using the very same uh, uh, flight file uh, from the geography CC file, and I will be relying on the uh, on the very same data set. In this case, for me, in order for me to start creating uh, an, an additional data stream to which will help us to populate the satellite data, we will uh, basically will create a new branch which will basically will help us to to um, like to, to create a parallel stream uh, uh, from any of the um, uh, data transformations that we want. In this case, I'm I'm, I'm only interested to create the, the parallel stream from the hash columns, um, uh, and I already have all the data that I can. Uh, and in order for me to reuse the very same uh, exist uh, data transformation step, I need to create a source to my satellite table, and um, this source and data source. Um, uh, I can say source set geography latest. I'll be using this. Um, um, the only th the only thing is that uh, which will be different in this case. I won't be uh, relying on the satellite table directly. I'll have to create a view since the. Uh, the satellite table um, may have multiple versions of the very same data, and then uh, it also will help us to to um, have the um, a visibility to see what uh, the about the latest uh, or the, the active record along with all the historical changes. So we always need to make sure that um, the 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 comparison or, or the check for the uh, for the um, uh, whether this record is new or not will have to be based on the latest um, uh, timestamp uh, uh, or the hash key value from the satellite table. Uh, for this very purpose, I uh, already have created a view which does basically provide us with that um, uh, visibility to see all the latest records. Um, I have this. Um, I have created for all other tables, but in this case, I'll be showing all the, the, uh, the table for uh, for the for the geography. I'll. And I'll show how that view looks like. And it's a bit slow. Okay. Anyway, um, the very same. Yeah, it, it's a bit slow. Okay. So this is this this is the very the very same uh, script to uh, that um, enables me based on the uh, uh, low timestamp to define the latest uh, combination of the the hash key the the hash key of the uh, of the geography uh, business key and then the hash key of all the descriptive attributes within the very same uh, geography source and, and data set which I'll, I'll be um, uh, using um, in this um, uh, source and data set so now I'm ready to uh, reuse the very same exists um, uh, data transformation step and I'll be I'll give him a more friendly name. I'll say check a new set uh, geography. Uh, and I'll be using the the latest. Uh, uh, I'll choose a uh, that doesn't exist as well. And um, the other different points or, uh, or uh, different um, the different way to Define my uh, uh, join logic between the source and data file and the uh, satellite for the for the geography uh, will be a combination of two fields instead of the one on only the the hash key in my previous case. In this case, I will be relying on the uh, on on two hash keys. Um, and 
knowing that my satellite table only uh, will will accept nine comps, not 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 ten. I need to remove um, one column, which I don't need to I need don't need to push uh, forward. So I'll set select um, new uh, set uh, geography. And I'll say that I don't need to see the business key because we already have the business key in the hub table itself. So now I'm ready to do the sync into my final um, set uh, geography table, which is the actual reference to the, to the physical table with nine columns. I can check the map. In this case, it should be one to one with all those nine columns. I'll leave the other map as well. I'm ready. Uh, I can either do the the the, um, the, uh, the data preview, but in this case, so let's create, uh, let's re, uh, test and reuse the um, uh, and actually execute this data flow within uh, within uh, uh, an actual uh, pipeline uh, um, within our data factory. So let's try to uh, create a new pipeline. I'll just give it a more friendly name. Um, it will be pass. ADF, you can create different names as well. Data vaults, and um, I will be using the data flow uh, transformation task. It's asking me to uh, reference a data flow. Click on OK. And in this case, I'm fully ready. I'm saving just, um, just to keep uh, all the changes in place. I either could publish in the trigger pipeline, or I can uh, either debug the the pipeline within my uh, the existing uh, data factory, data factory session. So I'll give it a few seconds, and uh, um, it will it will it will uh, give me that um, um, this type of visibility to see how the each different uh, transformation step will uh, will be per, uh, uh, will be performing. Um, um, I'll give it a look if uh, maybe um, uh, thirty seconds, maybe maybe a bit more to to start the actual each process. But in the meantime, you you can see that it basically does uh, does resemble all those um, the the data uh, the data transformation that we we. Um, we uh, have just created. We have all our uh, sources. We have the sources of the ge geography. We have the sources of the hop and satellites, uh, and also we have all our transformation steps. We have the hash, the the hash columns, basically the, the drive column transformations, and we have all uh, all other uh, all other. Uh, let me see the refresh. Yeah. So basically, we we see that um, uh, uh, it took a few seconds to to um, to run the, the complete the data flow. And um, based on the magic, we can see that uh, the number of records that um, um, uh, the data flow uh, was able to re uh, read uh, equals to 655. Uh, and all those 655 uh, records were loaded both into the hop uh, geography table and into the uh, satellite uh, geography table. And we can take a look at how um, uh, the data uh, looks like in both those tables. So we can see, uh, for some reason, I don't see the. The uh, my business key that was not inserted, but maybe there, there was uh, maybe some of them. Uh, there was um, one of the mistakes that I might, might have created along the way. I was creating the uh, data flow pipeline. Let me quickly take a look. What might be the cause? Um, let me see. <clears throat> we have the. Um, Um, on the data preview, everything looks okay. On 
All right, so let, let's try to cover it up. Uh, um, we have a few minutes left, so we'll, let's try to cover our uh, second uh, demo, scenarios, uh, demo scenario. So let's try to make some additional changes to our source and data, data files. Uh, so we have the edit, uh, we have a way to, let's say in this case, I will try to change um, one of the records. So we'll try to add, let's say, change the existing records and try to add um, a new record uh, with the, um, this this could be like a customer in many of one of the one of the Canadian uh, provinces. In this case, I will try to create a, a totally new record. In this case, the source insights uh, for the very same business key was slightly changed uh, with uh, where one of the text uh, one of the text attribute bit was was altered. And then I've also uh, introduced a totally new uh, entry with a new uh, business key. So let's save this record and see uh, how our data factory will behave. So let's trigger our pipeline again. It shouldn't take that long again since we already have our uh, data flow integration environment running. Okay, so uh, this scenario that, um, um, uh, will show you that um, from the sources uh, from the source of, uh, file, um, <clears throat> it uh, did identify that there was uh, instead of like previously um, source six fifty five records, now we have six fifty six, um, but only two new records were identified as new uh, and um, uh, on the level of uh, satellite geography table. When we look at the hub, ta uh, hub geography table, we can see that um, uh, this uh, uh, only new record, which was the indication of that. Um, um, let's see if I can show this example again. Only this new record should appear in, in our table. So any everything else uh, were, uh, was marked as um, uh, that it already ex it already existed in in our uh, target tables, our target uh, satellite uh, geography, and our target uh, hub geography tables. So um, that's why the, um, any uh, everything else were, uh, um, were uh, was not loaded into uh, into those tables. And let's take a bit closer look into how the data looks like. So we can try to query, uh, let's say, our satellite table. Um, uh, where, uh, let's say, province name, and I will, since we remember that we were trying to change something related with the Manitoba. Um, Manitoba wasn't code, it was, it was a name. Okay. So now we have three instances. The first, the, the very first one uh, uh, corresponds to that, to that change where uh, this is the, the first record is the original record. The second record, it's the, it's the, the second version, the latest version. Uh, they correspond to the very same um, hash geography hash key, but the, where the state province code was named. And this is the uh, reference to the that new record. And let's see uh, if we can see uh, if we can find um, the actual um, hub geography related tables. Um, key and then we'll say I'm still wondering why the the product alternative key I mean yeah maybe that's that's something was not properly configured in my data settle but in this case it that uh, it um, it was able to identify the new business key value, and 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 it did create um, uh, uh, a new um, entry in, in in the hub table, which uh, does correspond to which does correspond to our use case of 
uh, modifying the, an existing record and also create a new record within our uh, data set. So basically, um, we've covered uh, both demos uh, and um, uh, this help us to uh, see that um, uh, we can reuse um, uh, uh, the very same data flow to run the initial uh, to run the initial data load, and also we can reuse the um, uh, the very same data flow um, in order to support a use case of um, um, tracking uh, whether uh, sourcing data uh, already exists, and uh, also and uh, also to to uh, provide the data flow only for the uh, for the data that needs to be uh, um, uh, um, inserted in, in into our target tables. So let's try to recap our sessions. So uh, first, we've looked at the data vault modeling uh, basics. Then uh, uh, we uh, we had several examples of converting um, an, a data vault mo a data warehouse model into a data vault model, uh, and we've discussed a uh, uh, different different uh, methodology with, with this. Uh, we also um, did a review of um, Azure Data Factory mapping data flow capabilities. Um, and then we created a data flow scenario to load uh, um, our uh, very first and uh, a bit more simplified uh, data vault. Data vault. And uh, then uh, we uh, created and then tested our incremental uh, data load to see how those uh, incremental changes will be reflected within the data flow uh, workflow and how and what records uh, were actually uh, inserted in, into our target tables. So um, as a final thought, I would I would. Uh, and um, I'll try to um, share um, uh, maybe like a, as, a, as a closing notes, then um, that would um, describe that data vault uh, modeling supports so-called like massive, uh, massive parallel processing where we can uh, eliminate a need to uh, and or sort of like it, uh, constrain within the, the ETL process to pop to uh, have uh, the Data load of the of our dimension table first, and then um, um, I need to populate um, fact tables within the data vault methodology. We can run uh, both the dimension type tables, or uh, or just the basic hot tables, and the set uh, and the um, uh, satellite tables and the link tables in parallel because uh, we no longer have those constraints. The hash key, the the hash columns will define the uniqueness, and they will define the the, the constraint between each different um, uh, physical entities or between uh, uh, um, different tables of the data vault. Uh, the second, um, like close note, um, that I would I'll leave you uh, with is that the data vault model maintains consistency and uh, auditability. We can see that, uh, like um, in the example I, uh, I uh, had just shown to you, that we have a way to see how um, a particular record uh, was changed um, uh, with each different um, uh, uh, data load uh, iteration steps. We can see, uh, we can uh, we can track the historical change as well. <clears throat> And the third close note would be that uh, that um, data factory uh, and data flow in particular, it's um, one of the many ways that we can use to populate data vault. If we can um, don't feel comfortable with just using data factory on its own, we can uh, reuse other tools. Like we can use uh, um, a database, for example, like a database notebooks, which where we will be able to re recreate the very same uh, ETL process. Or if we Feel more comfortable to uh, create um, uh, a data flow process process with, where the less code is involved. Then the data flow will be the uh, really great um, uh, environment for for us to to create those uh, data flow uh, workflows. Um, and I'm also leaving you with uh, with a f uh, uh, with a few um, uh, um, helpful. Um, uh, resource uh, links information that's uh, where you can find more additional information about the um, uh, the data flow itself and uh, uh, by the data vault methodology as well. Um, so again, like as a as a close note, uh, my name is Ray Uh My uh, I work as a senior data engineer at Almers as a pension fund with the head office um, in Toronto, Canada. And you can follow me on my Twitter accounts, uh, and you'll also can uh, check my um, LinkedIn profile and uh, my personal uh, 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 blog post. Uh, sorry. Um, 
And uh, so thanks again for attending my session today and uh, have a great journey uh, building your data world models using mapping data flows in Azure Data Factory. Thank you.